Hi everyone, hope you're doing well. Uh, we've all come across these stunning images on Instagram of glowing geometric forms in the middle of nowhere. So I'm going to show you how to do it. Uh, so you can add this tool to your editing techniques in Photoshop. So let's jump in and I'll show you right away. Okay guys, once in Photoshop you load up your images, be sure to use images that tend towards the dark tones, otherwise your glowing objects will not stand out as much. In this case, I have this landscape shot in an afternoon in Masunte and a portrait of myself in the middle of the forest. Yeah, when I look at this landscape, I imagine a glowing archway over this little windy road. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. First step is to make a new layer. We're gonna name this one our main glow. In order to get the decent and uh, not flat looking color, we need to make several layers of glow. So we're gonna grab our pen tool and draw out our polygon whatever form you need or desire. In this case, it's just going to be a simple archway. Okay, let me just adjust this last point. Yeah, happy with that. Then you're going to right click and stroke path. The tool is going to be brushed. You push OK and then you delete the path. So there we have a little light archway. Now we're going to duplicate this layer. I'm going to name the duplicate inner glow. The inner glow is the one that's going to have the whitest and straightforward line and light, I'm sorry. Okay, so the next step is right click our main glow, go to blending options and check mark outer glow. Be sure to use the blending mode screen, pass it to 90, the color to red and the contour to point. Okay, Let's hit OK. And as you can see now it has a little glow in it but it's still not enough so we're gonna go up to filter to blur to Gaussian blur and we're gonna set the radius up to five hit enter again and now you can see it has a little glow to it now we're gonna duplicate this layer once again but this time it's gonna be our outer glow our outer glow we're gonna set the filter again Go to Blur, Gaussian Blur, but this time we're going to set the radius to 20. Yep, as you can see, it's looking quite like a neon light. Okay, the next step is to the to put the ambient light. So in this case, I'm going to make a new layer. And with our brush tool set to red, give it a big radius. In this case, I'm going to go to... Um, a little bit too big. How about to 200? Yeah. Okay. So it's going to be the light from the posts hitting the ground. So with Control T, Transform or Command T, you can adjust the perspective of this little dot that you made. I'm happy with that. Click Enter. And with the Alt key, you can copy it. Not this time. Okay, Alt. Yeah, now you can copy it. Okay. It's a bit too strong. But for that, first you gotta combine these two layers. And then we're gonna go up to Blur once again. Gaussian Blur at 20. And there we have it. Now it's a lot more diffused. We're going to get the opacity down, how about to 70? It's a little too strong. Yeah, like that. Okay, now we're missing the ambient light on the surroundings. So for that, we're going to create a gradient map. Whoa, all red. Double click on the gradient and set this point location to 50 and the color to red. Yeah. And this other point we're going to go up to color and we're going to type in this number. Hit OK. OK. Now we be sure to use to put the gradient map below everything. So we're going to go up to image adjustments and we're going to go to invert. OK. Now with your brush tool set to white, you can color whatever you want. Uh, to be red from the gradient with the black 
color you will erase whatever you've done so we're gonna set the radius to 50 of the brush and start coloring away yeah be sure to use white Okay, I'm pretty much happy with that. Yeah. Okay. Now we're gonna go up to blur once again, Gaussian blur. This time the radius is gonna be set to 100. So now it's a lot more diffused. Okay, looks pretty good. Another step to make it more realistic is to add a brightness and contrast mask. So we hit this little button here and the brightness to 150, contrast to 70. Okay, it's a bit too much, so I'm gonna turn the opacity a bit down. How about 70? No, maybe 50. Okay, it's looking pretty good. Okay, now I'm gonna show you how to change the color if you wish. So you select all your glows, make them into a group and then you're gonna add a hue and saturation mask. Okay, with the hue you can play around with the colors. Be sure to set that little button there that only affects the object below. Okay, so how about like that orange? Yeah, yeah, I like it like that. But then you have to change the gradient as well. So right click the gradient, not the mask, the gradient, double click, and in that middle point, you're going to choose your orange color. That's more like it. Hit OK. And there you have it. That's how you change color. And I have, I'm happy with this archway. Happy with this image. Yeah. So let's, let's go to our second example. In the portrait of myself. So I'm going to set this to white once again. Create a new layer. The same steps. This is going to be our main glow. And in this case, I'm going to do a polygon around my head. Okay, so with your pen tool, you start to draw out what's going to be your polygon. Okay. The stroke path is determined by your brush tool. So we're going to set the brush tool to 10, the radius. Okay, now we go to stroke path. OK, now you can delete the path and there you have what's going to start out to be your neon polygon. I'm going to duplicate the main glow once again to our inner glow. Remember our inner glow is the one that we don't put any Gaussian blur on it. So we go back to our main glow and this one go to blending options. Again go down check mark outer glow. Use the same same values as in the last example. Hit OK. OK, that's looking pretty neat. Go to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur, rate is to 5, remember? OK, now we're going to duplicate this layer for our outer glow. Yep. To filter once again, Gaussian Blur, remember this time it's going to be wider, so it's going to be 20. Yeah, okay. Pretty much looking cool, like a neon sign. Okay, next up, the ambience. Gradient map. Double click on the gradient. With this spot, set the location to 50 and the color to red. Hit OK. And the last spot down here, remember to type in this number, magical number. Okay, hit OK. Remember to invert this mask. We're going to go up to image, adjustments, and to invert. Okay. Now with your pencil to pen brush tool, I'm sorry, you can draw out whatever you want to be illuminated by the neon. Yeah. So around my eyes. Yeah. Obviously that's going to be illuminated a bit of my ear.
So now we're gonna go to blur, Gaussian blur, and set the radius to a 100. And now it's pretty, pretty cool actually. Okay, the gradient map always goes below all the neon lights. I'm gonna set the opacity down a bit. How about to 70? Yeah. Next step, create a brightness and contrast mask. Set the brightness to 150 and the contrast to 70. Oh. Okay. Set the opacity down a bit. How about 50? Yeah. And you can invert this one as well. But in this case, I'm not going to do it. So just make a group once again. I'm going to change the color up. Yeah, hue and saturation mask. And in the hue, you can change the color of your neon. Oh, remember to check mark this little button. Okay. And now I'm going to change the color of the gradient. Double click on the gradient, double click on the color, and choose the color that coincides with the neon side. So look at this. It looks pretty, pretty neat. I'm pretty happy with the results actually. It looks pretty good. It's pretty interesting, give an extra touch to your portrait and landscapes. So guys, the final step is to gather five friends and start doing the five movements that OA teaches us to open the port. I'm just kidding guys. If you make any photos and upload them, be sure to tag me on Instagram. I'd love to see your work. Got some knowledge out of this? Just leave a thumbs up, please, and subscribe if you want to. <laughs> see you in the next one. Cheers.